Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 50 to the power of 50 over 25 to the power of 25. So, 50 to the power of 50 over 25 to the power of 25, this is the same thing as 50 to the power of 25 plus 25 over 25 to the power of 25 because 50 here is the same thing as 25 plus 25. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case I have 50 to the power of 25 plus 25 which is the same thing as 50 to the power of 25 times 50 to the power of 25 now I have this over 25 to the power of 25. Now this is the same thing as 50 to the power of 25 times 50 to the power of 25 over 25 to the power of 25. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of, or sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of n over b to the power of n, this is simply equal to a over b to the power of n. So it's essentially factoring out the exponent. So in this case, I have 50 to the power of 25 over 25 to the power of 25. So now I can rewrite this as 50 to the power of 25 times 50 over 25 to the power of 25. Now, 50 over 25, this is the same thing as 2. So now this is equal to 50 to the power of 25 times 2 to the power of 25. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to, or sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is equal to a times b to the power of m. So in this case, this is going to equal 50 times 2 to the power of 25. Now 50 times 2 is 100, so now I have 100 to the power of 25. And 100, this is the same thing as 10 squared. So now I have 10 squared to the power of 25. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 times 25 is 50, so I have 10 to the power of 50. So this is my answer. All right, so I have 40 to the power of 40 over 20 to the power of 20. Now to start, I can rewrite this as 40 to the power of 20 plus 20 over 20 to the power of 20. So all I did was I rewrite 40 here as 20 plus 20, because 40 is equal to 20 plus 20. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, 40 to the power of 20 plus 20, I can rewrite as 40 to the power of 20 times 40 to the power of 20. And now I have this over 20 to the power of 20. So now I can rewrite this as 40 to the power of 20 times 40 to the power of 20 over 20 to the power of 20. So I simply just took out the 40 to the power of 20, so it's just simply like this. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of n over b to the power of n, this is equal to a over b to the power of n. So in this case, I have 40 to the power of 20 over 20 to the power of 20. And I can rewrite this as 40 over 20 to the power of 20. Now 40 over 20, that's simply equal to 2. 
So now I have 40 to the power of 20 times 2 to the power of 20. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this can be written as a times b to the power of m. So in this case, a is equal to 40, b is equal to 2, and m is equal to 20. So I have a times b to the power of m, so I have 40 times 2 to the power of m, which is 20. So now, 40 times 2, this is equal to 80. So now I have 80 to the power of 20. And this is actually the most we can simplify this. So 80 to the power of 20 is our answer. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 36. So right here, I want to find the value of x. So before solving this problem, I'm going to teach you guys an important property of exponents. So if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then a is equal to b, but this is only if x is greater than or equal to 1. So let's say x was anything, let's say x was a decimal, 0 0.4 then this property wouldn't apply to this because x, or sorry, by x, I actually mean a. a has to be greater than or equal to 1. So if a, let's say, was 0 0.4, this property wouldn't work out because a is not greater than or equal to 1. So now, for my solution to this problem, I first start with x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 36. Now 36, this is the same thing as 6 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to be taking the power of 3 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, m and n are both interchangeable, meaning this can also equal a to the power of n times m. And if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simple terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, we can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So if I change these two places, we get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to, now, 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3 is the same thing as 6 to the power of 2 times 3, which is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. And remember, if a, this is only if a is greater than or equal to 1, and in this case, a is 6, which is greater than or equal to 1, so this property applies. So I have x to the power of 3 is equal to 6. Now to solve this, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and now I'm left with x is equal to the cube root of 6. So this is my answer.